Hi everyone. Welcome back to the painting room. I'm gonna paint some minis. Nice. I'm the only one in the painting room at the moment. We'll see if anybody else comes along. Oh, I've got my paints. Left them up on the shelf. Hang on, folks. Camera angle off. Fire. Hitting it with my head. better maybe hopefully in here. Hmm. Uh, and I just put my hand right in the <laughs> that's oh. hmm how to get the light that doesn't block the camera. That's the question. That's today's question.
wants to be where the camera wants to be. Okay. Maybe a little better. Who I haven't done the armor.
find something a little different here. You can kind of see the light in my camera on my face there. All right. But that's in the way of that camera. There's no winning. There is literally no winning on this. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna try one more thing. Thank you. 
totally in that. downside now is that uh, my face is covering exactly where I'm going to hold my hand, right? Yeah, yeah you're all with me on that one. You can fix that. Oh, and the light. <laughs> I can't win today! Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ten, 10 millimeter actually. They're um, they're from the uh, manufacturer called Pendraken out of the UK. Uh, they started doing a fantasy line. Which I really enjoy. Looking for the use for them. Crazy project in mind here to rebuild the old Milton Bradley board game Battlemaster. It's 10 millimeter. So here's a here's a these guys here somewhere. That's what they look like done. I got two more two more stands of these guys. Empire Militia. <clears throat> Got my, uh, did a, did a unit of uh, cavalry as well. They're ready to go. And I got a whole pile of Also been collecting bits and bobs to make the rest of the pieces of the game appear. A little size comparison. Here's here's a unit from the original game. <laughs> Next to the new unit. Ten millimeter. <laughs> and, uh, one of the pieces that that's in the game is this uh, cannon pile. There's a there's a bunch of them. A little deck of them used for aiming the cannon. And it kind of fits on top of the unit that you want to target. <clears throat> Let's 
I got myself these little wooden inch and a half discs. I think they're probably just about right. And I just got to print out the art. Do it on there, maybe? Maybe a little uh, Mod Podge or something? I don't know. Figure it out. Things to uh, do with the <laughs> For now, yeah. Actually, uh, here's here's the, the the main reason I'm doing this project. If uh, if you've ever played the game, so it comes. This is the board, <laughs> which is a vinyl mat. Your hexes are geez, I don't know what, uh, about five inches across. Doesn't even fit. Yeah, look at this. I gotta, I gotta zoom out the camera here. So you can see right. So this is this is your board, which is a five foot square vinyl mat. I had printed this board, this lovely board, where our hexes are instead about two inches across. And uh, looks nice, decent board, and it's about two foot square, so it'll fit. On my table, I don't have to crawl around on the floor to play this game. God help me finding someone to actually play this thing with me, because I'm gonna be really upset if I put all this work into it. No one wants to play this stupid game. Um, how many units? There are 25 total across two armies. There's the Imperial Army and the Chaos Army. The Imperial Army is 11 units, the Chaos Army is 14. I actually have all of the, uh, let's see if here. I can fit them all out. I've got them all actually all sitting here on my on my painting. Tray. This is the entire Imperial Army. Uh, there you go. All, all eleven of them. So uh, let's see, it's three three units of militia, three units of cavalry, two units of bowmen. What did I do here? That's <laughs> um, one unit of crossbows, Imperial Knights, and the cannon. I'm very excited about. I've never painted a cannon before. Very much looking forward to it. That's it. I've got the pieces assembled for the for the Chaos Army. Got a lot of the miniatures kicking around, but I haven't based them and set them up and primed them and all that. So there's still quite a bit of work to be done. And this, believe it or not, is the reduced version of this project. Uh, when I first started it on this thing, I really let it get away from me. Um, but it was all just an excuse. It's all an excuse just to, to, to find a reason to paint some of these 10 millimeter models. So that's what I'm focusing on. Just painting. Alright, let's get some metal. So yeah, that's that's my project. That's what I'll be working on as I continue to stream here. Thought maybe streaming would me motivated and focused. We are officially in the, uh, the Wandering DM's painting room here. It means that actually uh, I'm live streaming the uh, Discord server. So anybody who is a member of our Patreon, hop into the Discord and join us. Chat and maybe even paint a little. I've had some members of the, of the group come on and paint with me before. But I don't really have a schedule to when I'm painting. I just decided to do this in the free snatches of time I've got. So you never know who's going to do it. Tonight, like, on my own. What's going on with this guy? Huh? This is where I got to last I'm really focused. What's going on with this guy? Hopefully I'm not.
it is a blessing and a curse painting of that scale. They are itty bitty, but it's very forgiving. You know, you don't have to paint eyeballs at this scale. Um, you don't have to do a lot of detail work at all, really. I, I put a base coat on, I ink them, and, that, and they just look great right, right then and there. Maybe after the inking, I might pick out a few small details to make them pop a little, but that's about it. But they're very fast. Usually I can paint, you know, I convince myself it's faster because I can paint like a whole unit of five guys and about the time it takes to paint one model at 30 millimeters. Where the project got away from me in the past is started getting all these pieces together, had the miniatures all planned out. I was going to build the board myself rather than have it printed. Build it, and I was going to build it to be the box, so the box itself would like unfold and become the board. It seemed like a cool idea at the time, but it turns out I'm a poor box maker. <laughs> It was not going well. So, you know, with any kind of creative projects like this, I usually have to take a step back and I force myself to ask the question, what do I really want? Do I want the, the experience of making? Do I want to learn how to make a thing? Do I want the, the enjoyment of the craft? Or do I just want the end product? And sometimes, like with this project, it's kind of a mix. I really want to enjoy painting the miniatures, but for like the box and the board, I just need those pieces. And it's probably better if I just pay someone else to make those for me. Otherwise, I'm going to drive myself nuts trying to perfect a whole new craft that I've never tried before just so that I can have the final product. So I've been researching places to buy a box. Not totally sure what size box I'm going to need. Probably will have to build myself an insert. Hold pizza. That's fine. Or something. It's a tough, uh, sometimes it's a tough call. Sometimes you're not sure if, like, you're about to discover a whole new hobby that you love, or if you're just going to frustrate the crap out of yourself if you just want a stupid box, <laughs> and it will come out right.
if you've never played Battle Masters before, I'll tell you the story too of how I got introduced to this game. Uh, so this game was a game that was made on a uh, joint venture between Milton Bradley and Games Workshop. And it was kind of a, a sequel to Hero Quest, maybe, or, or built on the success of Hero Quest. Uh, that did so well. Let's try a game that kind of introduced people to wargaming in a light, casual, sport game kind of people way. It was meant to be kind of this easily approached board game version of essentially Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And I think it did a phenomenal job. It was released uh, Gen Con in the very early 90s. And I happened to be there. Young teenage me there, I think on my own. I think that might have been a year where I had flown out there on my own. I had gone a year before, so maybe I was 15, 16. I think I had gone to a, a Gen Con the year earlier. My, my dad had Bless him, had taken me out. I had no idea what I was doing. He, um, he spent his days going to ball games and touring breweries. He dropped me off at the convention center in the night, in the morning, and picked me up late at night. But once he got a feel for what that was like, and sort of knew that, like, I could be trusted at this thing, getting a little older, he decided he did not want to repeat that for he just gave me a plane ticket and endorsed, which I say I'm still shocked by, but endorsed the idea that they would rent me a hotel room since I was technically too young to have a hotel room on my own. He just gave me my older brother's college ID and said, if anyone bugs you, tell him this. Hopefully you look enough alike, it'll be. And, uh, turns out nobody cares. <laughs> Checked in the hotel, no problem. No problem. So, uh, anyway, I digress. Where was I? So, there I was on my own at Gen Con. They've got three tables of this set up right in the middle of the convention, right in the middle of the exhibition hall. <coughs> got it all set up, and it's massive, right? It's five foot, five foot square board. Uh, tons of, tons of big miniatures on it, right? Looks gorgeous. I can't remember if they had painted them or not. Now I'm trying to remember if they had actually painted the miniature. Probably, right? Got a demo it. So the thing looked great. And they have boxes of copies of the rule book that comes in the game. And they're just handing them out. Handing them out. Take a copy. Go read the rules in your hotel room or while you're waiting on another game or whatever. Come back and play it. So I did, and I played it a ton. By the end of the convention, I was like, I have to have a copy. So I bought one. But the box is enormous. It's huge. Just like all the pieces in it, right? It's this big, it's, it's kind of rectangular board game size, but it's still a good, I don't know, three feet by two feet, maybe four inches deep or so. To this day, I have no idea how the hell I got that thing home. What did I do? I must have just carried it onto the plane with me. That's all I can come up with. can't imagine how I got it. <laughs> Since then, I've met many people who, uh, who bought the game but not many people who were into playing it. I feel like most people bought that game just as a cheap source of miniature. Because it was. It was a great... Like, if you were playing D&D at that, at that time and you wanted a whole lot of cheap plastic minis, it was a great way to get it. You got, you know, you got these nice militiamen and archers and crossbowmen and on the chaos side, you got orcs, goblins, Wolf Riders, Beast Men, Chaos Warriors. Just a great collection. 
Maybe we just start a, start a collection of miniatures. I knew plenty of people who bought the game, cannibalized it for the minis, never played the dang thing. Can't say I blame. Oh, Perkins, you were at Gen Con in 93, 94. I was probably there too. Might have crossed paths. That was right around when I was when I first started going. I got very addicted to going to that convention. And I lived in New York at the time, so getting out there was not easy. But I every year I find a way. Whether it was convincing my dad to take me or going on my own or I think one year I got some friends to like all pile in a van. Good times. Good times. Kind of the heyday of the second edition D&D was role-playing game most being played then. Uh, tournament play was kind of out, but people were playing um, Living City, Living... Well, Living Greyhawk or just Living City, something like that. Mm -hmm. Is their style of tournament play. <clears throat> kind of sad that I missed out on earlier tournament Everything I've read about that, that was in the 70s and 80s. Uh, does it have a good narrative theme to connections? Uh, <clears throat> you know, I would say it's not. It, it, I think the book did have a, a, a little background for running a campaign where some of your units between battles would become elite or something like that. I don't think I ever played it that way. I always played it as a, just a one-off game. I mean, again, the point for me was it was a way to play kind of miniature war game with someone who found that intriguing, but not enough to have ever bought a game or bought miniatures or anything like that, right? The nice thing was you just, just like a board game, you pop it out, play with whoever it is you're playing with, kind of get that, that war game fixed without having to find devoted a lot of energy to models and painting models thinking about the game, right? Just, it played like a board game. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a board game. I think at that age, I also had the basic set of Warhammer Fantasy. <clears throat> Um, and again, enjoyed like cracking open. I don't think I ever got the first one. I don't think I actually played a game of Warhammer Fantasy Battle until I was in my 20s. Um, no, there was in narrative elements, game to game. It, it didn't exist. Nope, nope. You, you know, crush your enemies, do it again. Basically, the game. <laughs> I mean, even the Chaos Army is kind of funny, right? Because, um, you know, like clearly it, it was trying to cash in a little bit on, or was using sort of the IP of Games Workshop, right? So, I mean, you, the Empire is very easy to recognize and say, yep, that's the Empire from Warhammer, no problem. Yep, Crossbowman, a cannon, 
mm, mm, knights. Totally makes sense. The Chaos Army was this bizarre. Like, it had some green skins in it, and it had some beast men, and it had some Chaos Warriors. Uh, this is kind of amalgam of like, bad guys from, <laughs> from the Warhammer world. And there was no explanation. There was no story. Bad guys are invading. Good guys are defending. Maybe. <laughs> All right, I need to touch on that yellow. Do. If anything, what I'm doing here really is board gamifying it even more, right? I'm making this thing tiny and portable so I could actually maybe put this in a box and bring it to a board game day and say, you know, who wants to play a quick game of Because that's the, the thing that annoyed me, that the, the most troublesome part of this game, is there was no such thing as a quick game of Battle Masters. Because getting all those pieces out and setting the whole thing up was just a lot. And you had to crawl around on the floor. No one had a team. And that was the downside. Great game though. I know. I mean, I know a lot of people are obsessed with Warhammer or with uh, Hero Quest. Rightfully so. I'm obsessed with that game as well. But, uh, help me. The yellow, I might as well. <clears throat> Perkins, what are you painting? Orc unit for Age of Sigmar. Yep. Yeah, I haven't really done anything really Warhammer. The era I was most into it, but just when they started doing the plastic screws where they broke the pieces apart, and you. What was that? Was that 7th edition, maybe? Into followed me around until just the most recent move about a year ago. Nope, I'm gonna put this down. Can't keep moving this thing. Never use them. Ugly phase, it's very true. Uh, yeah, I, th I think the fun thing about 
the 10 millimeters for me is that that ugly face pretty much lasts the entire base coat, which is like most of the work. And then like it still looks kind of ugly. And then you slap your first ink wash on there. And suddenly, oh my God, what happened? Transformed your miniature. Look amazing. Went from garbage to amazing. Just like that. I have a ton of these miniatures that are individually mounted. Uh, when I first started painting them, what I was mounting them on was a tiny square piece of uh, what I actually did is I took a, <clears throat> like a magnet business cards, um, which is to say it's just like a, you know, business card side piece of magnet that had like adhesive on it. You're supposed to stick your business card to that, but chop that thing up into little tiny squares and mount them on that. <clears throat> it served both as a base and it was magnetic so I could stick them to like a little movement tray or... <clears throat> Um, or if I want to transport them, I would often put the cookie tin. Uh, and I played a bunch of Book of War with those guys. I think on my blog there's photos of a big Book of War games. So, super fun. I'm curious to see how, how hard I could push the scale of Book of War games. Hey William. No problem. I don't I don't expect you to be here every time, man. This is I seriously do this in a little snippet of the time I can find. If anything, streaming this just to keep me motivated. Maybe possibly actually finish this project. Maybe I mean, I finish a project. So rare. <laughs> Oh, very rare. All right, all right, gentlemen. You guys are looking. I've, I've somehow pulled like all of the um, <clears throat> pulled the primer off. Yellow out. Anybody need a little extra yellow? Yep. Do. Progress. I keep losing way too much time just setting up my lights and cameras and stuff. Eventually, I'll land on a setup I actually like. It will be easy to repeat. I think I'm liking, I mean, I, I of course would love to hear feedback from anybody watching the stream. But right now, I'm, the big experiment I'm doing right now is I've got the camera much further away, which hopefully allowing it to properly autofocus on these guys. So I don't have to muck about with manual focus. But let me know if most of the time these things are blurry. So we'll go back to the other method. I mean, I know I'm the tiniest of tiny field.
time I look over here to my right, I'm looking at the screen to see what the shot looks like. And I feel like my the act of looking over there changes it. I can see out of the corner of my eye the light changing the focus changes something. I don't know. Maybe it looks awful. That's what I'm watching. Quantum quantum focus. <laughs> it only looks good when observed. Getting there, We're getting there. there. Get some armor, Get some clothes. Or wrap up. Well, I really should go get some supper, everybody. Thank you for joining me. And, um, feedback was welcome. Um, tune in a little later tonight. Dan will be here uh, playing uh, Pool of Radiance. Uh, the old gold box game. Uh, even earlier than this uh, lovely board game. And, um, yeah. And all will uh, laugh at his misery as he uh, eventually TPKs himself. No, aiming for no TPKs. Support him in that, in that endeavor. Um, yeah, come on back. Check that out if you like. Um, I mean, talk show will be back on Sunday at 1 p.m. That's uh, when we, uh, Dan and I come on talk to folks. We had Jim Davis of WebDM on uh, yesterday. Lovely. Always like catching up with him, and uh, I think it's just going to be Dan and I uh, next Sunday. So I'm not sure what the topic is. Oh, my head. All right, thanks everyone for joining me.